internet and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call Back to the business zone. This is Crystal Kurt and Gilbert Buchanan, your small business bar medic. And today we've got a wonderful guest. And Crystal, who do we have in the house? We have Miss Cherie Franklin. Now, Cherie, I don't even think a uh, bio does her well because she does so many we things. We will throw out the bio. <laughs> We're we going to let her tell us because <laughs> this lady is pretty awesome. We will go live. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just and I, I told Gilbert earlier, Cherie, that the one thing I like best about you is that you're a visionary, but you're also a visionary that makes stuff happen. That's right. Thank you. And so a lot of people will say and do, and they have all these get big plans, but they never activate. But if she says she's gonna do it, oh, it's gonna happen. Whether the people who are involved or not is still on the trail, she leaves them in the blazes and she takes off. And We're in love with her because she's a disruptor. She just like disruptor. we are. So this is beautiful. So now she is in this new area, and that new that's new to California, and it's the California cannabis industry, and she is taking it by storm. She's learning about it, but at the same time, she is coming hard and strong. And so she has uh, created a program, uh, an accelerator hub called Think and Grow Lab. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to her, and she's going to tell you all about herself and the lab. Welcome to the business <laughs> and what, zone. And what the cannabis industry means to California. Wow, thank you for that <laughs> introduction, <laughs> and thanks for having me on the show today. Uh, yes, my name is Cherie Franklin. My core business is Urban Design Center. We're consultants to government agencies and nonprofits, helping them uh, transform their visions to reality. We specialize in affordable housing development, transit projects, infrastructure projects, building boys and girls clubs, youth centers, um, and economic development projects. We raise the money uh, and help to manage um, the project from beginning to end. Mm. We act as an owner's representative and a project manager to make sure the project is completed. Uh, in accordance with the funding and all the requirements, and we specialize in land use planning. So we work on a lot of projects That's here. It's beautiful. Uh, we are the thought leaders for Lamert Park Village 2020 Vision Initiative. Um, my firm is one of a few firms here in the city of Los Angeles who are approved to create business improvement districts, so we create special tax zones, and those zones are a specialized tax that uh, is collected so that you can um, uh, implement programs within a, a specific area, mm -hmm. such as um, um, people who go through the areas as community ambassadors and they make people feel comfortable shopping or uh, clean streets programs and branding and marketing. So we 
form the Central Avenue Historic District, and Ms. Crystal here is um, the um, accountant for the organization, so thank you for keeping us oh, in order. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I am so pr so impressed by what goes on in Central Avenue. You think you're in a whole nother little city. That's great. I mean, she got it running. She got people on bikes, their associates on bike or ambassadors is yes. what they're called, right? And, and so, Gilbert, you will absolutely love Cherie because when she talks about finances, mm -hmm. we were worked extensively on the chart of accounts and mm. I mean this is like these are like masterpiece chart mm. of accounts I'd I say at this yes. point we didn't work through them we didn't thought, thought through them and I'm very impressed with the work that I've done I, with them. I am loving that that's beautiful <laughs> yes. beautiful that's one of the things that's big and dear to me with small businesses having their financial house in order and part of the program that we have here at the Small Biz Pro System, it helps businesses organize their balance sheet, profits and loss statement of cash flow and all of that, running through their ratios, their gross profit margins and all of that. So this this is great. It's much needed. Uh, for the Central Avenue Historic District, for instance, we have 266 businesses on the corridor from Vernon to Washington Boulevard and many of them uh, are just transitioning into business management. So yes. we welcome your support uh, to help them succeed and we're working on diversifying their products and so forth. But they're paying taxes, so we want them to be successful and we're what there. I'm so we about. would love to continue to work oh, with Oh, yes. You. So we're, we're, we're going to set something up so we yes, can come we on in and meet with you, show you the program, how it works, and immediately start working with these guys and getting them set up the right way. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so um, as Crystal mentioned, we, we have been around for a long time, over 25 years, building affordable housing and helping building capacity within um, uh, organizations so that they can build and manage their own buildings themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we also help raise a lot of grant dollars. Good. Um, it was in my role as the uh, manager of the Business Improvement District. Uh, my partner, Danny Shaker, mm -hmm. uh, he um, and I are engaging in affordable housing development and other businesses. And he said, you know, Sheree, we really need to focus on this cannabis. I'm like, oh, no way. <laughs> you know, are you kidding me? I'm not going to be involved. I grew up in South Los Angeles, so I have, you know, more of the Im had more of the image of the war on, yes. on drugs and what it, you know, a lot of things that were happening in our community, thinking that we need to keep people away from this as a business, right? Right. right. That was my my thought, and and I have family members who've been on on the other side. We'll say, mm -hmm. um, but he said, no, you know, this is an economic engine. This is a new mm -hmm. economy. Yeah. And just like you know, alcohol was a new economy. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is, is that it was scheduled as a Schedule One drug, and mm -hmm. it's not. And 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 he began to educate me, and I began to meet other people to understand the medicinal benefits right. of, of cannabis and in fact that there's a whole movement to legalize it which you know people are going to jail and there's no proof that it does a lot of the things that um, it w would be equivalent to actual drugs right so um, he uh, Reginald Jones Sawyer I have to throw this in there <laughs> our assemblyman Reginald Byron mm -hmm. Jones Sawyer senior uh, called our office and he's like, Shree, you know, we need you to bring your Central Avenue Historic District um, bit on the, the bus with me for the King Day. And I said, oh, okay, that would be so nice. Well, I've known Reginald for a long time, but I only had his personal email. Uh -huh. So I went online and I said, um, oh, let me find his work email, his official email, uh -huh. so I could send him a thank you. Yeah. And I was searching and up pops, you know, Reginald Byron Jones, Sawyer, your authors, the, you know, new um, uh, recreational marijuana, uh, you know, bill. And I'm like, what? Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so I said to Danny, I said, Danny, you know, we're going to be on the, the bus with Reginald, Reginald during the King Day Parade. You should talk to him about marijuana. <laughs> so we get on the on the trolley. It was like an open trolley yeah. you know, going down. I, you know, we were on there and it was really nice. It was just our board and a few other people and Reginald. And so I lean over and I say, Reginald, Danny wants to talk to you about marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you because know, in my day, you whisper about yeah, that. Yeah, marijuana. Right? <laughs> he goes, what did you say? I said, marijuana. <laughs> and he looks at me into the top of his lungs. He goes, you mean cannabis? <laughs> Tree, it's cannabis. And I made that legal. And I'm like, oh, my God. So needless to say, I was highly embarrassed. We were on this respectable King Day parade, and we're talking about cannabis. So, <laughs> Oh, boy. So that's how I was introduced to it. I had to go and 
then do more research. Right. Um, and uh, and that's that's what started. And that was what January twentieth with King Day. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> January twentieth. She had done a whole lot in, <laughs> in this short period of time. Yes. Um, so um, so we uh, set about. Danny's like, I really want to do something positive. I want to make this, you know, something that people in our in the community can benefit. He he owns property on Central Avenue, and he's been very committed. Mm-hmm. So uh, we went to Council President Herb Wesson, who is leading the charge to legalize uh, cannabis here in the city of Los Angeles. Yeah. He had a working group, so we asked permission to join the working group, and he goes, sure. He goes, you need to do something. Make sure we get jobs. Make sure we have access. Make sure that you know. Um, that all the resources that um, are going to come from this, the community benefits, all those things stay in our community. And if we don't do it, who else is going right. to do it? So that led to the development of Think and Grow Lab, mm-hmm. which is an accelerator hub focused on providing access, mm-hmm. but also innovation. We right. wanted to make sure that our people in our community have an opportunity to benefit from the new medicinal elements. Mm -hmm. Uh, It also is going to innovate when it comes to lighting and and water because a lot of it's aquaponics. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so we began to put together a a concept that um, is going to be a what is a framework for training people in the industry and and setting what we call our what we've set as our social equity elements and that's providing business opportunities, providing job and job training opportunities and job placement. Uh, innovation, letting people get, get involved in the innovative new technologies and new um, benefits that are come, going to come from cannabis. Also, investment, uh, people creating frameworks for people within our community to actually invest in this opportunity. And what we call social parity, people who work within the cannabis industry having an opportunity to invest or to create employee stock option mm-hmm. programs. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Right yes. That's excellent. Because, it, you know, um, it, it, it is an industry that is our new, you know, gold rush, a lot of people right, are calling right, it. Right. So we want it to be an opportunity to create legacies and, and wealth. And it is a, it's going to be larger than the movie industry. They're That's projecting great. that it's going to surpass the movie industry in terms of billions of dollars, $50 billion by 2026. I can see that. I can see that. Now, I see where you have a training program here, Mm -hmm. and I'm looking at uh, several modules. You've got um, about nine modules here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So um, we were able to... um, uh, submit an application and get accepted to the LaCrette's Innovation Center mm-hmm. downtown uh, Los Angeles in the Arts District. Mm-hmm. And so we're very excited about that partnership because there are so many brains there um, communi- uh, creating all kinds of innovative technologies and water and lighting and, and sustainable um, products. But we, uh, what we've done is uh, we've gone through both the state and the city of Los Angeles uh, proposed regulations. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just a few days ago, the city of Los Angeles uh, uh, created the commission that's going to oversee reviewing all the retail applications and and, uh, also selected its um, first executive director, Mm -hmm. Ms. Kat Packer, uh, and she's just a phenomenal um, person and leader. And then one of the leaders here of Lamert Park Village, Misty Wilkes, is is a commissioner. So the city has set these uh, the division up. It's a brand new department, which is uh, incredible in and of itself, and a whole new staff. And so they're now going through and finalizing the regulations. Um, and the state is finalizing its regulations as well. Mm-hmm. It's being driven by um, the governor Brown put out what we call a trailer bill, and he uh, determined all the elements how the department's going to work together and uh, what kind of licensing and and so the state's finalizing that through all the different departments mm-hmm. so there's a cannabis department at the state of california right. but other departments uh, also are involved food and drug um food and agriculture i'm sorry and then also uh the uh, board of equalization so there are many different departments that people will have to um get um sign off from, fill out forms, and um, so forth. So a lot of people aren't used to that. Some of the other things, so what we've done is gone through all of the city's regulations, which mirror, which um, uh, include everything from the state, because local jurisdictions can uh, have additional regulations, but they can't have anything less than what the state. Mm -hmm. So it has to be um, more restrictive. It can't be less restrictive. Okay. So, um, and then in the city of L.A., they've decided that you have to, you 
get the license here first, then you can get a state license, but you cannot operate until you have a state license. Mm. Uh, so that's one of the important things I want people to know. A lot of people are saying, oh, I'll get started. Please don't do that. Right. Because not only does the city of Los Angeles overwhelmingly support um, legalization, and we also did at the state, um, they've also put in some requirements um, and some, uh, some consequences. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, a new consequence that they'll start to uh, um, implement. Im implement in the new year is property owners will be fi can be fined up to twenty thousand dollars per day. Wow! Per day, if and the business if they are facilitating illegal or non-compliant businesses. Oh. So we want property owners to know. You, you might be enticed by the money, mm -hmm. but you've got to do things right. right. So it's okay. going to be very important. And we only have about 135 to 180, depending on who they are, what they call pre-ICO businesses that are have permission to operate under the medical, former medical. Mm -hmm. But we have over 1,400 illegal operations in the city of Los Angeles. Wow. So those are going to have to... They're going to uh, convert them? Well, hopefully. We're telling people you need to make sure that you um, become compliant. And right. we don't want the, the city shutting down a lot of businesses um, uh, that are compliant mm -hmm. um, or, or that could be compliant, let's say that. So we're asking everyone to do, look at the regulations and get started now. Licensing of the state starts January 2nd. Mm -hmm. So everybody's moving towards that. Some other cities, the smaller cities, mm -hmm. are saying, hey, come to our city because we'll give you a license right now and you can just start. We don't care mm -hmm. because they're trying to draw away from right. the, the real brand is the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It is going to be the international market for the cannabis. This is the new gold rush here yeah. in the world. I can imagine. Wow. I can and so imagine. we need to be at the table. There are many industries that we have not or taken advantage of or were able to take advantage mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. And we're just now making inroads like in entertainment and all those in terms of the, the dollars, ownership, control. Uh, but this one, we can start off in that position. Now, you know? let, let me ask this, real, this quick question about compliance. As mm -hmm. you were talking about mm -hmm. some of the homeowners or property owners who don't ensure that uh, their businesses or the, the renters or their tenants mm -hmm. are um, uh, licensed with the state, then would your organization then send out compliance officers to try to uh, encourage them to register or certify? Well, we're not going to send people out, but we welcome people to our training programs. Okay. Um, we, um, you can go to thinkandgrowlab.org and uh, you'll be able to register for the different training programs. We have one coming up on the 29th mm -hmm. of this month, and we'll have one every month and maybe a few others. And we're partnering with other organizations also who offer training programs. Okay. So yes, they will be able, and for our organization, we're focused on the application. Okay. We're focused on you know getting you ready for J2, January 2nd, mm -hmm. uh, at both the city level and the state level. And we have created, gone through the applications and created several modules that will mm -hmm. help people walk through the process, mm -hmm. uh, your organizational structure. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, you know, for most people, that's, you know, do you, are you a corporation? Are you sole proprietor? LLC. What are you? But yeah. um, this, the state is asking for a lot of details for your entity that you wouldn't normally have to disclose. Right. Right. Okay. You have to disclose, you know, who your partners are, your spouses, you mm -hmm. know, what percentage ownership everybody has. Which makes sense. Which makes sense yeah. because they're trying to keep the black market out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. And yeah. then there's... Um, uh, other things that you'll have to do in terms of business filings uh, and management of your organization, uh, the finance side of it. We want to, to more people in our community become leaders in helping manage these organizations. So that's a top job right there, mm -hmm. being able to understand how to manage the money. And as yeah. you know, this is an unbanked industry. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we're doing also is we're working to create a credit union right. and then eventually a bank because that's right good. now it's a cash economy, yeah. mm -hmm. which is not a, a good way to do business. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, and then we are working with people on their site control and readiness. Mm -hmm. Right now, wherever your site is, um, you can only have retail uh, sales, um, like dispensary, but they're mm -hmm. called retail now, in commercial zones that are that are not next to sensitive uses, mm -hmm. like a child care, a school, a park, a library, a drug rehab center. Right. So you need to make sure your, your site is compliant or you will not get a license. Right. Manufacturing and cultivation can be in the... M zone, and that cannot be uh, within 800 feet of a school and mm -hmm. all the other sensitive uses, you're okay. And that's mm -hmm. where the classes are going to come in perfect because yes. it will, will educate them about these things. Yes.
Yes. Yes. Uh, we also want to focus on what they call um, your uh, standard operating procedures. You have to explain how you're going to operate, mm -hmm. you know, for the different type of license in retail, cultivation, manufacturing. Yeah. If you want to do delivery service, all of your delivery services that are out there, they're not operating under any rules and regulations ah, right now. Okay. So they're going to have to, and, they're, and we'll go over those things with people in the classes. You know, one thing I would add to this mm -hmm. is a safety and hazard communication program as well. Yeah, they, we have they, that under, um, you know, under your compliance. Oh, okay. Yes, because um, there are a few things that are an issue with your compliance. One is seed to sell tracking. Mm -hmm. um, that means every single seed that you have is mm -hmm. tracked Track. all the way. Mm -hmm. okay. And that, so I tell people that in your language, I said, you know how you're trying to work out QuickBooks? Mm -hmm. Well, the seed to sell tracking is QuickBooks on steroids. <laughs> right. You know, so you need to sit down and learn this because that's where the fine structure is is mm -hmm. created by the state. Yeah. You can be fined at so many levels for not doing things, mm -hmm. even managing your waste yeah. in a proper way. So you want to avoid that because that can add up. Right. 5000 here, 5000 there for a fine because you didn't do mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. Right. But the other issue is... Um, mold, mildew, mm -hmm. um, making sure that the product is a safe product and right. testing, mm -hmm. uh, sending it for any other kind of solvents and things like that. So those are things that have to be uh, compliant. And then there's volatile and non-volatile manufacturing mm -hmm. so that you have to um, comply with all of the rules and regulations if you want to do volatile manufacturing. Um, the city of LA, we're not sure if they're going to allow volatile, but other areas in the state do. Oh, okay. And that's using like butane for extraction and things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you might need to have one of those uh, enclosed rooms so in mm -hmm. case anything blows up, not the whole building blows up. Right. <laughs> I just had a little room. Just, just that that little room. Room. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was telling Gilbert that, you know, based upon what we do, we are, we've already talked about myself in the financial side, but, you know, Gilbert does a lot of under the compliance just yes. in his mm -hmm. regular building and yeah. business and then I have, we have some associates do HR training and, and safety and OSHA. So, so we will yeah. come to you with a program to, to outline what we can do yeah. for this to make sure everyone stays Absolutely. in compliance. Yeah. Because if we're going to help our people in our community transform, remember they're just dealing with it as cash now. Mm -hmm. They're not right. tracking. Right. Right. Most people can't even tell you what their cost of goods sold That's are. That's true. Right. And the accounting uh, for cannabis is um, is not the same. You, you don't get to depreciate anything. Mm -hmm. You actually don't even get a cost of goods sold. It's mm -hmm. just cash in, cash out, yeah. how much you spent, right. your tax on the total amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The tax for the... Um, for the uh, medical, medicinal product is at about 5%, and then this, the recreational or adult use is 10%. Mm -hmm. So, And you only, uh, you, you only each location can only be one or the other. Mm -hmm. You can't have both mixed together. Oh, really? Yeah, so you, if you, and it has to be separated by a door, separate facility um, for cultivation or manufacturing or retail, and then your retail can't be within 800 feet. So if you wanna operate multiple, here in the city of LA, you'll only be able to operate under one license or person, mm -hmm. um, three retail shops. See, that's where the standard operating procedure comes in. Oh my God, we oh, we yeah. have to focus on it and get people. Oh, yeah. This is a business. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is a business that oh, is yeah. micro. Manage. Yeah, I'm looking at this. Yeah. And I'm getting excited. I'm going, wow. Yeah, we can bring these in. We can do this. 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 It's amazing. Absolutely. And so we also we're very heavily focused on compliance because we don't want people to spend the hundreds of thousands of dollars it's going to take mm -hmm. to um, create these businesses and then be shut down because yeah. of something that they didn't do to stay compliant. But the other thing that we in Los Angeles are very proud of is that uh, Council President Herb Wesson has is creating something that's not in any other. Uh, city. Mm -hmm. Oakland has a social equity program and maybe another place, but I think the city of LA is going to be the the um, gold standard because we have a much bigger population mm -hmm. and we have uh, we're a much bigger city. Mm -hmm. And so what he's done, unlike most cities, he's, he said, fine, we're going to make sure that our existing um, pre-ICO businesses are licensed first. Mm -hmm. Then thereafter, they're considering a registration for uh, manufacturing and cultivation, not retail, for them to come out of the you know woods and become legal. Mm -hmm. But after that, it's a one-to-one. -one. And what that means is for every social equity license that's issued, other people can get a license. Mm. And so he's like, it can go one for one as long as we 
have to right. until we feel that we have issued enough licenses to people who were impacted by the war on drugs first. Right. And I, I tell you, he's hold firm on that, and it is something that I think that's where we in our community have to step up. He set the, the framework okay. for how this is going to work. Yeah. So if it's going to happen, we need to train people on accounting. Yeah. We need to make sure they understand compliance. Mm-hmm. We need to find them compliance sites, our real estate people. Yeah. We need to make sure that you know we're making sure that uh, people, uh, our young people are, are trained in this new opportunity. Mm-hmm. That's where all of our business development Entities need to step up to the plate. Oh, yeah. it will never happen. The right. city has set the, goal, the the framework. So I tell people, even about Obama, he set the framework. Now, what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. So now it's up to us it's to up step to us. up to be able to help to make sure. So now the taxes from the sales, how are how is that going to help the city of Los Angeles? Oh, wow. So first of all, um, city of L.A. is going to be, I, I don't know, it's like, just imagine you're in the beginning of something. You Cash know, cow. <laughs> yes. So the state state is expecting well over a billion dollars and given the population uh, and that's just recent you know we don't know how that's going to grow so mm-hmm. the city of LA could probably get at least a you know with a big city let's say it gets a third of that is 300,000 mm-hmm. our deficit for the city is only 136 million dollars so if you get an extra 300 000, million yeah, dollars wow. uh, you can see how that helps but not only yeah. that the state has mandated where a lot of these taxes go it's going to go into drug rehab programs it's going to go into education and it's going to go into law enforcement so a lot of people ask oh well will there be more enforcement these police are going to have mm-hmm. so much more money oh, yeah. from the cities up to the state mm-hmm. and the you know to enforce and hopefully the people in washington whoever those people are we want to talk to them mm-hmm. don't right. decide, decide to stick their heads they're busy enough being you know <laughs> they're, bi- they're <laughs> super busy right about now <laughs> super busy <laughs> dealing <laughs> with the <laughs> russians yeah. Leave us alone. You know? Russians and those other people. <laughs> yeah, those other people, you know. Okay, yeah, those people. Yeah. We won't talk about them. But um, so, so they're going to have money. They're yeah. going to have money to do surveillance and track things. So don't assume that nobody's watching you right. after. This mm-hmm. is a lot of money on the table to give to our law enforcement and also for the schools. Because we know that young children under the age of 21 should not indulge in cannabis because it, it does have effects on them and that is proven mm-hmm. uh, when your your brain is finished you know growing and developing yes but not until then mm-hmm. so we need to make sure parents are educated and mm-hmm. schools are educated and young people are educated you know they can be trained on the job component of it but don't indulge and myself I've never indulged right. um, but it is an economic business opportunity right. just like other things like alcohol yes. right like alcohol. So, so that's yeah. what I, when I was doing the research one when you first brought it to me I yeah. did my research and then two when I was researching for the show, that they are equivalent this to a post um, uh, after alcohol prohibition. Oh, absolutely. And this is going to be that same. Yes. And so if we take the same processes on preventing children from drinking and absolutely. so forth. So I, I see it exactly like that. Yes. It's just, of course, the compliance has to be in place that it is a legalized business. Yes. So after this program, do they receive a certificate for completing these nine modules? No. What they get is an ability to fill out an application and get a business going. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like, we, we don't even want, it's not a, an exploratory thing. We want people at the table yeah. who are ready to operate a business. Right. That's their certificate is a, is a license. Okay. okay. <laughs> to well, operate. That, that works. That That's works. Better. You know what I mean? Okay. The state, the city of LA is is um, uh, right now. The industry is asking them to issue licenses. Right now, they're only going to issue a certificate of compliance, and then you get a state license. But what you want is a license, and we're encouraging the city to issue licenses to people that people can you know um, pass down to their children, uh, just like you can with the liquor license. Yeah. Mm. And uh, so that's what we want. We, there's no time for glory. You get no st- no stars. No nothing. Right. Just so, a license. <laughs> So they go through this before they get the license. That what we want are people right now who are ready to enter the business yeah. um, uh, and are ready to start packaging. This is a lot of information to package right. from your, your site to your, your, your financing, your organizational structure, your mm-hmm. SOP, your standard o- operating procedure. Yeah. Um, you also have to uh, have a community component. That's another right. component of our city that is very wonderful. They're mandating, uh, the state mandates community benefits, mm-hmm. so a neighborhood council Councils will have a strong role in this process, mm-hmm. but the city of LA doubled down on that. Mm-hmm. They were like, thirty percent of your employees have to be local hire, ten mm-hmm. percent oh, have okay. to be from the transient community. Mm-hmm. So 
that means we need to make sure that people are being trained because you will not have a business and a license if you're not also looking to employ locally. So mm -hmm. we're encouraging all of our nonprofits to get people ready and make sure the businesses in your community are hiring locally. These are not minimum wage jobs. Yeah. Um, and the other thing uh, for the money side is branding and uh, owning a brand, mm -hmm. owning a, something that becomes iconic. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're focusing on that. People need to know an intellectual property protection. So we're also going to walk people through that process. Um, so we, at Think and Grow Lab, we have a general training program. People can come. We'll also have a program if people need more assistance, you know, helping them package uh, up their application and um, submitting it to the state. So we'll have a deeper level of, uh, and we're also making sure we're infusing uh, innovation into every meeting so that people look at it from a, a green perspective mm -hmm. as well as new technologies because it's not the same old business. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we also have created um, an incubator. So we have a 160,000 square foot building mm -hmm. uh, on Pico Boulevard that's going to be an incubator where people can actually come and it'll be the only one in the country that we know of mm. where you can have hands-on come and learn as a as a, as somebody who's job training, mm -hmm. but also if you're a business, you want to learn how to grow. You can learn how to grow there, and then we will help place you into a facility that's compliant and and move your business forward and wrap our arms around you in terms of management operations, mm -hmm. C to sell tracking, um, and staffing. Yeah. So that 160,000 square foot building, we're actually going to accept applications from people who qualify for social equity right. to be in that building. That's good. That's, That's fantastic. Good. Well, yeah. Gilbert and I definitely want to be oh, for sure. in involved. You already know we've already talked <laughs> about what, we're, what, what my role is going to be. Yes. Um, so now the compliance that's to get the license. So is there auditing and com ongoing compliance after they've gotten Absolutely, the license? Absolutely, okay. yes. And I just wanted to mention the name of our incubator is uh, Cola Cannabis of Los Angeles. Cola with a K or uh, C? C, yeah. Oh. Cola is actually the head of the plant, so it has oh. a symbolic meaning. Oh, okay. Yeah, my partner Danny Shaker is um, leading that effort. And we're partnering with different people also and in, in raising money for them. Um, but yes, this is an ongoing compliance. Mm -hmm. Every year, you will have to submit for a new license. Ah. So that means by, if it's a 12-month period, by month seven, mm -hmm. you're preparing for your new submittal. Mm -hmm. Every single year, there's yeah. a new filing fee, and you have to get back in the game every year, and you can lose your license. So again, it is um, highly regulated. Right. Uh, both You have to reapply both at the city and the state. You have to have your city before you get to the state. Okay. So it is going to take some management, right. you know, okay. for people to be able to do that. And when you look at that, these applications are going to be like three ring, you know, yeah. uh, three inch binders mm -hmm. kind of thing right. uh, of information that you're yeah. submitting. And the ones who don't submit, they just don't get. They don't get in, you know, yeah. so we want to make sure there's opportunity for jobs and an investment. Not everybody's going to be ready. Mm -hmm. And so all I keep saying is get ready. Don't worry about this or that. Start your application packaging. Start your process now yeah. and start getting ready. And pull consortiums together. Mm -hmm. You know, get your family together and decide how you're going to invest. You know, um, you know, there are people who have land in other cities. You know, maybe you would do cultivation in those areas. But mm -hmm. it is a great opportunity for families to pull together as well to look at investing in this right. market. And and what's the outreach process you're you're using to be able to bring people into this new gold age? <laughs> well, there are many people are doing uh, uh, outreach. Uh, there's a California Minority Alliance, which is one of the organizations that was uh, uh, helped to pass Measure M, which which created uh, the city's um, policies mm -hmm. on uh, cannabis, and they're also making sure that social equity uh, is at the forefront of the city's um, cannabis um, licensing process. Mm -hmm. So they're outreaching. Um, we, um, through many of the other institutions that I work with, we're doing outreach. So our classes are packed. So mm -hmm. uh, we're actually, you know, we're at love. We love being at the Lacrette's Innovation Center, but. Uh, we can only have like 40 or 50 or 60 mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. in a room. We've already feel like we, we're outgrowing the space. So now our next meeting, we have to book multiple rooms. Right. Somebody has to present here. Then they have to go over there. Oh, okay. So there is no shortage. But what there is going to be is a long line mm -hmm. for licensing. So we're telling people, get ready now. The city mm -hmm. of L.A. has an open process. Right. That means anybody in the world can go. Can, can submit. Ah. So, so we want to make sure that 
our com- community yeah. that we get that outreach to them. Because mm-hmm. we can be, you know, overrun. They, they could get a 10,000 licenses. There's no limit right now, mm-hmm. but there is a limit based on a land use compliance. So there's right. only so many you can have in these zones. Right. Now, what's the, the cost of a license? Um, it depends. At City of LA, submittal fee is $7,500 as of now. Okay. And the draft regulations, I don't know what it's going to be in the final, and that's every year. Uh, the state has licensing based on the type of license and the, the size of your grow. So the maximum grow, you hear people go, oh, I'm going to do all these licenses. Well, the maximum that they allow any one entity to have in the state is four acres. Mm-hmm. And that four acres, they're only issuing so many one acre. Mm-hmm. Most of it is going to be 22,500 or less. So you can have 22,500 as your big canopy. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's 10,000 to 22,500. And then there's like the more the micro, like 2,500 to 5,000 mm-hmm. micro grow. Um, and they have that broken down in terms of square footage. Right. So, um, so there's a different fee for each one of those, and you're submitting that on an annual basis. Okay. Um, and it could also be based on um, uh, some of the other companies, like your seed to sell tracking. They're going to be charging you um, based on your revenue mm-hmm. uh, and or or sales. And so that also is a you know pretty pretty big number that you'll have to pay out every uh, month to just track your business right. okay. you know, to keep it legal to keep it legal so um, and then what are the co- their costs for the uh, think and grow mm-hmm. lab okay what's that cost um, each one of them depends but we're trying to keep them very um, affordable this next session is an is uh, $95 uh-huh. uh, for um, the session which is a four hour session mm-hmm. um, and we will have more that are different price when we get into the SO uh, those would probably be between two fifty and three hundred dollars because it's as someone sharing their best practice methodology with you mm-hmm. and how you actually prepare and implement a business. So those will be a little bit more, but each one uh, between ninety five and three hundred dollars mm-hmm. uh, per session. Right. And then we'll have a uh, we're building our uh, website thinkandgrowlab.org so we can have links to information because some people are you know they can do it on their own. So we want to have the website so that you can go on and pull down the application, everything you need to do. You might not need that hand-holding. Mm-hmm. So it will be a resource to people as well. So, um, and I, what I'd like to do is with, with, with the video here, I'll, we'll kind of clip it up so your part, this part is kind of separate. Oh, and okay. then I'd like to be able to put the links below it on, yeah. and on our YouTube. Thank and you. And, that, and then links to wherever they right. need to go in order Thank to you. get to uh, you. And then um, even with Recycling Black Dollars, because we could reach out to some of our groups and I belong to another group called the Bella Network. Mm-hmm. In fact, okay. we're having a conference in November okay. and I'd like to introduce you to Alicia, who's the founder, mm-hmm. because this might be, you know, for new business opportunities. Right. Um, uh, something that we can link in and do some business together with her, with this group of women. There's about 700 of us right at the present moment. In Love this, it. You know, yeah, I mean, I, that fantastic? Yes, well, well we definitely trades, want right? more yeah more women involved I yeah. you know there are not as many and you know people of color are also not at the table yeah. uh, as and we need to change that right. mm-hmm. um, so one of the brands that we're launching is um, uh, Califia Organics mm-hmm. which is you know the mythical character who founded uh, California uh-huh. African American Latina so uh, we're pretty excited about that and, okay. and we've been talking about women and pulling together collective to be able to be at the table in this industry. Okay. In fact, uh, I think on the 24th, we're actually having our planning meeting for the conference. Okay. Yeah, see what your calendar is like, and we can, I can bring you. Okay. And then you can meet Alicia and see, you know, her, her, her purpose for the Bella Network was to create a tribe for the women in business and that we always have our each other's back and we support each other in whatever we do. Absolutely. And it's an amazing group of women that are, we're all uh, forward thinking mm-hmm. and, and and there's like 20 of us that are coaches that were the initial that was the beginning part but Alicia has such an amazing vision for this and uh, so uh, this could be fantastic so let's see what you can I know you're a super busy lady <laughs> 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 yes, we uh, we're very fortunate um, that we have uh, we have contracts with many city departments and and nonprofits, so we're very fortunate on that side. But 
this is a once in a lifetime, so I've yes, put a lot on yeah. willing to put things on hold because when licensing hit, we've got to be in line. I want to mm-hmm. just like people line up to you know for what after Thanksgiving yeah. for Black right, Friday. Right for Black Friday. <laughs> for Black yeah, Friday you want. I, I want to have everybody with Green intent, Friday, huh? You know, <laughs> Green Friday. I like that. <laughs> Green Friday. We're have Green Friday. Everybody lined up at City Hall yeah. waiting to file their applications. We need to be there in full force right well however we can help because we you know gilbert has a full curriculum mm-hmm. on um compliance that he does yes. with many entities and and he and it's based upon certification but it's the same process yeah. right Absolutely. um um uh, organization yeah. and legalization of operations all operations management, management. so he has a full curriculum already let's in do place. it um our doors are open uh we have the event on the 29th if you'd like to present or at least introduce yourself oh, that sounds great. That Welcome to do what that. Time, what time is that? It's from 12 to 4 12 on to the 29th 4. at the LaCretz Innovation Center okay. on uh, uh, um, Hewitt Avenue in, in the Arts District off of 5th and Alameda. So I'll um, send it to you and you can yes. post it. But please come. Again, you know how hard it is working to make sure businesses stay compliant I know. on an ordinary basis. But just imagine, just uh, tell people, this is think about this. Mm-hmm. Every transaction has to be recorded video by video right. every transaction wow. there's going to be somebody watching every cell mm-hmm. that you do mm-hmm. wow. so just think about what that means in terms of oversight now what kind of so what when we went because wow this is a lot of different businesses or opportunities yeah so far even just the so the growing is one thing but then there are people who can sell security cameras security cameras security company every Every uh, dispensary or well, retail place mm-hmm. has to have security and also cultivation and manufacturing. Yeah. Let's just face it, we have to have that in our businesses. Um, there's equipment, uh, lighting, mm-hmm. um, um, aquaponics systems, soil. Um, there's um, going to be a need for ventilation. HVAC people are going to be very busy. Electricians. Mm-hmm. Your average cultivating site needs between... Um, like 800 to 1200 amps, which normally a normal building will have like 200. Right? Oh, wow. So, so everybody so, have to come back in the room right. real quick. Yeah. And then keeping all that in order, mm-hmm. you have to have a HVAC system, which has great filtration so the smell doesn't exit the building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, real estate, uh, you know, facilities management, keeping the mold and the mildew out and any other hazardous materials out of the product itself. Mm-hmm. Transport, delivery. Um, you know, I have a cousin who operates a trucking company. I'm like, you're going to get a transport license. Yeah, you I know Mona is definitely wanting to know where she fits in from the real estate stand- oh, standpoint. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, Timmy is already a facility man, and he's looking for his second act this after. This is facility management <laughs> and keeping the system, not only from a, um, you know, keeping it clean and managed in terms of the operations of the building, but well, it's cultivation. Main- maintaining it. Y- yes. Yeah. But, and also cultivation is a buy room kind of business. Mm-hmm. So when you plant the seed, it goes from a seed to a, uh, another growth facility, then it might go to a drying facility, and then there's people in that room, then they check off who was in that room, mm-hmm. then that person has to check off who was in that room, and then who did you hand it off to, how much was in that bulk before you submitted it over oh, here, wow. so that nobody's taking that bulk out the back door, right, right. then somebody's managing the trash to make sure there's nobody at the back door collecting the trash. Mm-hmm. That has to be mixed with some other kind of wood or something right. so that it's not usable mm-hmm. and it has to be managed properly so you're watching how people are operating eyes on every single person yeah. throughout the day all day mm-hmm. very different than oh go in there and pack that up oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so your employees got to be specifically trained oh, yeah. so that they're handling it yes. knowing that everything is visual right Wow. That, yes. So you definitely got to have somebody HR involved in understanding. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And you have to have labor agreements if you have so many employees. Mm-hmm. So that is another thing that people, you know, yeah. who has, and I think it's um, 20 employees or 25 employees, whatever it is, mm-hmm. more than that, then you have to have a, a labor peace agreement. Right. Right? Right. right. So that's another thing people have to be able to 
to manage and just hiring people alone. Mm -hmm. Right, so they're going to need a consultant that will come in and teach you. Absolutely, HR management. Um, This field is, you know, every meeting there are lots of attorneys because they have to keep, keep people compliant. Um, at both at the uh, city and state level, but you can have a lot of other staff people who understand the market. Banking, mm-hmm. if we're ever going to move into a banked economy for the cannabis, one of the things that's going to be um, incumbent of whatever institution and like for our credit union that we're creating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't just say, oh, yeah, just come and open an account. No, I need to know your business. I need to know who's in it, how you're operating, what your operating income is, where you're selling to, how you sold, whether or not you paid your taxes, whether or not. Oh, because wow. I have to make sure that you're not a front for some illegal yeah, exactly. operation, right? Oh, exactly. Because then, so this is maintaining really for them because they're unbankable right, right. now. So. But even when it goes and even in creating a credit union or mm-hmm. people are moving in, you can't just open your open bank accounts. You have yeah. to know everybody who's right. banking with you. So that's a different kind of banker. Yeah. It's a very different kind of yeah, banker. Yeah, that is a different kind of that's Yeah, because right now you're walking in a bank and it's like, okay, next. It's that's your all driver's you get. license <laughs> and, and, and a Social Security that's and it. $250, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it won't be that kind. No. You're gonna, it's almost like applying for a loan or a mortgage because you're going to have to turn over so many documents Absolutely. in order for you to be given a clearance Absolutely. to be the bank. Absolutely. And that bank needs to be clear that you're not depositing depositing money that wasn't part of your 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 um seat to what you've been tracking seat to sell you know so also oh, it's got to tie into the to the accounting system then it needs to tie into accounting or have some way of reviewing those documents okay and saying oh yeah we know that they brought in this much and this makes sense that they now have this many dollars not that many dollars and it's like where did that it's come from okay. your bank needs to make sure that it's tracking and and only banking dollars that are being traced Right. Okay, so that'll be a separate system. So if you yeah. have another business, this is strictly cannabis business here. Oh, yeah. You're and this keeping is whatever everything. kind of business you yeah. have over here, but we cannot, no commingling no. of no any kind of No commingling of wow. any other. In fact, um, they don't even want you selling any other real products in your in your space that's another thing people would like to see mm-hmm. you know that at least you could sell a t-shirt you know, <laughs> <laughs> see, you know? No, huh? yeah see, these folks are going to have to be set up as if they're going to be audited by absolutely the or whatever you audit know? ready yeah. and it probably single, need to be audited like every six months yeah. every to single keep people day on track. oh no the state is nope. not only watching every can watch every mm-hmm. single transaction mm-hmm. i mean that's just every time you do something right okay um but they your books are open 24 7 they can walk in and look at them Mm -hmm. at any time Ah. and of course the billions of dollars that we collected will give lots of money Mm -hmm. for people who will just love to just walk in and find something you know wrong with your business oh yeah because they don't have enough money but they're making a lot of money i mean so you gotta be some controls there Mm -hmm. and it definitely can't leave any open and it seems like they they thought about every loophole that there possibly could be which is good yeah Yeah. it's um well you know other states have got uh have uh, adult use a little bit before we have even though california was the first and medicinal um other states denver um up, um, Oregon and other Washington have had uh, recreation a little longer, so we have been able to. Cut, they've all come down. A lot of the administrators in those states to talk about best practices. But the thing is, in um, Denver, what do they have? I don't know. A handful of operators right. compared to what we're going to have in the city. Right, it's like exactly. night and day. I mean, we're gonna just. It's just. Just can't compare. And right. I'm going to tell you too. Some of the folks in Denver and even in Vegas, Nevada, state mm-hmm. of Nevada, um, they're not compliant. They're not operating like a business. Right. They they're just a little facility where people come in, okay, cash, and that's it. So this is going to be to me is going to be the standard. It's going to be that benchmarking, you know. Facility. Yes, and I think even in Vegas, they only they had less than twenty. Just you know, yes. we already have a hundred and thirty five, mm-hmm. eighty plus already. Yeah. already, and then that's going to grow. Yeah. You know, so if we have eight hundred, we'll have more than all the other states right, probably right, combined. Right. Wow, just on the dispensary side. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into the actual uh, edibles, that's a whole different kind of compliance. So that's ma- that's manufacturing, and okay. so being able to there are lots of rules. They don't want things that look like packaged like. 
uh, products that kids would um, would have. Buy, okay. And uh, I, I think that's really good. I don't even think they should look like anything a kid yeah. would want, right, personally. Exactly. Um, they, the state of California isn't allowing uh, things like drinks or fruit drinks or things like that right mm-hmm. now. So that's something, anything that can... Um, that has to be refrigerated and you know can that spoil. Is, right. And that so a that's child can pull out the refrigerator right. accidentally. Now I also so with similarly in Sawyer Jones, right? Jones Sawyer. Yeah. Jones Sawyer. Uh, there's some legislation for those that have been incarcerated if they have felonies. I thought yes. I heard that at the last meeting I yes. attended. Uh, that they will be able to own, have businesses as yes. well? Yes. Yeah. So so both um, Assemblyman Reginald Jones-Sawyer and um, uh, Council President Herb Wesson, their purpose and intent here is to make sure that people who have uh, suffered or uh, because they were involved in marijuana during the war on drugs mm-hmm. have an opportunity to enter this market. That mm-hmm. okay. They have done everything they can from a regulatory perspective to make sure uh, that we are able to offer opportunities uh, to people in our community. That's Fantastic. what I think is true leadership, right. personally, yeah. because it's not easy. You know, people are coming at them going, well, why do they get to get licenses, and why is it a one-to-one, yeah. and, you know, why so much attention? Well, mm-hmm. you know what? We put them in office, we want them to lead, and as far right. as I'm concerned, they're leading. So, yeah. right. sorry, go get your own people. To run for office. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is absolutely fantastic, oh, and however we can be a part of it, we definitely want to be. Um, I think uh, the being at the ground level of something revolutionary yeah. and disruptive as this, mm-hmm. this is could be pretty awesome. Fascinating. I have I've been involved in literally every market here in the city of Los Angeles. Wow. Uh, Transitorian development. I was former president of transportation for the city of Los Angeles Commission and mm-hmm. housing uh, on the board of zoning and rent stabilization and yeah. I tell you if I went to someone I said hey you know I work at transit oriented development and we're looking at you know building up the density around our our nodes of transportation and it's like womp womp well, right? <laughs> <All righty. laughs> okay Sheree that sounds <laughs> exciting that sounds, but if I just say you know oh. Uh, cannabis. Like, really? <laughs> really? You got my what? 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 <laughs> Everybody is involved. Have never been involved yeah. in anything where your politicals, your departments, your communities, your neighborhoods. You know, uh, even seniors. Seniors are the new market mm, because yeah. they are using this for a lot of ailments that right. they have. Everybody is interested in this topic. I've mm-hmm. never, and so I just—it's hard for me to even talk about anything else I do, right? Part. Because <laughs> this, this thing, and that's why you know when I introduce you to the Bellas is because uh, there's a lot of them are looking for their second act. That's right. They're coming out of corporate America and they're getting ready to retire, and so that's been a lot of our demographics. Is okay. What can my second act be? And you know the thing that small business and ownership entrepreneurship brings it is the ability to build legacy to enter a market, Mm -hmm. generate income so that you can invest in something else, whether that's your children's future in college or real estate Mm -hmm. or another small business or a franchise. It gives you the opportunity to do that. And that's where we've missed out. A lot of people who are in markets here who have uh, been involved in the garment districts or been involved in other businesses such as even people nail salons or Mm -hmm. something like that, Mm -hmm. they save those dollars and they reinvest them Mm -hmm. into something else. That's where we need to be if we want to be able to be able to take care of take advantage of any economy and to help the next generation that's, that's what we're missing right there absolutely and with that being said we're at the end of, of our okay. show I which know. we have to have her come back out again with I the know. next act we're, we're the second part to. yes definitely <laughs> Thank but you. we really want to thank you, Sherry, for coming here. Thank you. And uh, we're definitely, uh, uh, Crystal and I, we're going to set up a meeting with you so we can come by and uh, see how we can get things started. Okay. And I'm so excited about this. Very, very excited about it. Yeah, so. and I'd like to see how we can also incorporate some of our legacy um, nonprofits and how, whether we're doing job training or we something. Have, we're we, bringing them to the table. Yeah. Yeah. Concerned Citizens of South Central Los Angeles, PV Jobs. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, the Institute for Maximum Human Potential is our fiscal agent yes. and is going to be doing um Preparing people for work, um, concerned yes. citizens doing that, mm-hmm. going into the prisons and training people now. Right, you know right. how they re-enter and mm-hmm. re-enter a market from yes. a business perspective. Exactly, mm-hmm. absolutely, that is critical. We want them all to come to the table. That's great because uh, we're going to so, actually have a think tank, and so that maybe that's some conversation we can have. Uh, Leo Kablai, you know Leo Kablai mm-hmm. with Operation Hope, uh, he reached out to me, and that's some of the things we're talking about. So that could be some of our. 
the, our first project. So Absolutely. thank you yeah. so much thank for being you. on the show. And uh, customarily, we would have talked about upcoming events, but we're out of time. So we'll see we you guys got, next week. We'll see you next week. This is the Business Zone. Hello, meet Larry. Larry is a general contractor. Larry is very good at his craft, but Larry has a very tough time managing his paperwork because he is busy taking care of his client's needs. Larry just cannot find his important business documents when needed. Larry is also being passed over for bid opportunities from prime contractors because he is perceived as not ready. He doesn't know where his business license, certifications, insurance and other key corporate documents are located most of the time. Lucy owns an auto body and collision repair shop and has been using a business management and procurement assistance program called Small Biz Pro to keep her business organized, business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. Small Biz Pro is a three-in-one cloud-based business management, procurement, and market research assistance system designed to help businesses become business ready, contract ready, and bank loan ready. It also provides back office operation solutions for small businesses. Lucy is able to stay ahead of her competitors because she uses Small Biz Pro to manage her business daily. Lucy just clicks on Small Biz Pro from her tablet, mobile phone, laptop or any internet accessible device for data retrieval and she's got it. Lucy introduces Larry to Small Biz Pro and now Larry is more organized and can now find all of his documents and new bid opportunities in seconds. Larry now saves $120 in labor costs for each missing or misplaced document. Just simply go to your web browser and log into smallbizpro.net and register today for a limited 30-day free trial offer. Services start as low as $1 per day. Let's put the competition out of business. Small Biz Pro. If you stay ready, you don't need to get ready. Register now at smallbizpro.net and begin saving money. Email info at smallbizpro.net or call 626-533-1186.